Hey guys, what's up? We're going to do a blind review now. Um, hadn't done one of these in a while, but it's always good fun. So that's where you, we, what we do is I'll work through a game that I've not seen before. I haven't looked at the, um, the results necessarily, although I'm assuming that Bob wins this one. Spoiler alert. Um, and we're going to go through and I'm going to try and imagine what I would play in each situation, what I would expect um, the players to play. In each position and that's a good way to get a comparison between you know whatever their level is and whatever my level is um, and you know you can throw in your own thoughts as well so all good fun so this was posted shared by Bob on the we have a secret group for chess bootcamp live members and um, Bob has shared this game now Bob has been it's just become live since the beginning, which was like February. He was rated 600 rapid, and he's climbed then pretty steadily up to 830 now, which is which is great. So, without further ado, on to the game. All right, here is the game. I'm even going to hide the move so I can't see it. I flip the board so we're looking at it from the black perspective, which is Bob. And we have D4. Good man. Bob plays the England Gambit. And uh, we have d5 here from white. Now, this is already kind of equalizing for black. The problem is that I'm not, I haven't really boned up on England Gambit declined ideas, but I think the move is bishop c5. You want to get your bishop out before you're tempted to push um, pawn to d6. Okay, Bob plays uh, knight f6. This is fine. I mean, we're attacking the pawn. It is defended once by the queen. We may well see knight to c3. Of course, this does not preclude bishop c5. Okay, we have the other knight coming out. Now, this knight is now attacking re5 pawn, which is currently undefended. Now, d6 would be a tempting way to defend that. I would push the pawn. e4. And I'll tell you for why. You're moving it from an under, a square where it's undefended to a square where it is defended, and it comes with tempo because you're hitting the knight. This is, by the way, a half-hour game, 30-minute game. Well done, Bob. Good man. And the knight runs away, all the way home, squealing. And now, I think still bishop c5, because apart from anything else, it's going to help you to castle. Um, you, you don't want to play like queen e7. Um, no. Exactly. Bob is learning well. By the way, Bob is rated 832 here. Opponent is rated 850 from Brazil. We have pawns e 3 this is great because it um, releases this bishop into the board. It's not great in that it stops this bishop from coming into the board. Oh, or at least very far. You can go to d2. That's it. So again, you see this little bit of grabbing space just in the middle. There's a few benefits to it. One is that this pawn can't get out far enough to get out, out of the way of this bishop. So this bishop may end up having to fianchetto on the queen side. Another great thing is not only if we hit the knight... Remember this donkey that was here, yeah? It's retreated. It, it can't come back out to its favourite square, f3. You know, donkeys love f3. Okay, now we have d6. Makes perfect sense. The bishop is now outside of our little mini, little bitty dark squared pawn chain. I would expect this bishop to want to come out to here, where it's got good view of, uh, of the, the queen's skirt. Exactly. Um, it, it, I mean, it could come to d7. Could come to d7 if it wants, if it's got ideas about coming this way. But I think that bishop's going to come there. Not immediately, because it's white's go. Now, obviously, the bishop is not going to go to g4. So, castles is definitely an option. Bishop d7, I think, is a nice flexible move. Another nice flexible move is knight to d7. Knight to d7, we're not committing to anything. We may then play knight to b6. The good thing about knight to b6 is we then have two knights looking at this pawn that's defended only by her madge. So that would be a flexible move. You don't have to rush with developing this bishop. If it hasn't got a, a good-looking square to go to, chill. Bishops can sit back and chill. Okay, castles. Right, that's one of my top candidates. Okay, we have bishop to c4. Hmm. Is ID 
Pacheco using an entire bishop in the defence of one pawn. It's like that's his bishop's only job. It's his bishop's really only reason for being there. Um, yes, he's vacated a square for the king, should the king want to castle that way. But remember, he's already pushed h3 as well. So if I had the white pieces right now, I think I'd be thinking about, you know, just like hunkering down on the queen side. I would. All right, the, the question is, <clears throat> what does Bob do now? What does Bob do? I don't think this is accurate, although it's not it's not a bad it's not a bad thing. A six B five I like more. But even so, knight round here, hitting this bishop again would be great. Get knight B to D seven. Love it. And opponent is now pushing another pawn. You know, Bob is playing like an intermediate player and the opponent is playing like a sub-1000. Just the way I see it. Now we have... Okay, so knight b6 now threatening the bishop. This bishop is currently pretending to be a pawn. Not the cleverest. And then, then if we take the bishop, we can have c... Uh, sorry, b takes c, c4. And then this pawn is solidified in the middle. Ain't no real reason to do that. Knight e5. Let's have a consider of this. These four squares here is what we call the centre. And I like these. A knight in the centre is good. I would consider that. I think another thought. c6. Because then if pawn takes, pawn takes, and then you're going to push in the centre. And build yourself a lovely... I think... I, f I fancy that move. I like c6, and another reason is it brings a, it allows the queen out into the board. Okay, we have knight e5. Jolly good move. Right, and again, like we say, does not preclude this. So any time you're playing chess, you see a move, you think, that looks like a good move. You have to say to yourself, well, look, it's a good move now. Could I still have that move next turn? Is there something that I would prefer to do now and keep that move in my pocket for later. Well, let's see if Bob does it. Well, we don't know. Okay, we have bishop b2. Now, <clears throat> it must be noted, ping pong, bada bada pum pum, right? One, two, three, four, five, and six. Pawns on light squares, okay? It, white only has two pawns on dark squares. This is white's good bishop. This one is poo. This bishop is plop, okay? And it's currently acting like a pawn, right? So does this bishop want to take here? Well, if it did right now, the only way we could recapture would be with the d-pawn. And that wouldn't be fantastic because we'd have double pawns. We'd have an open d-file and an open d-file with an advanced pawn here. So with this in mind, rook e1 springs to mind. Queen e7 springs to mind. And of course, the bookie's favourite, pawn to c6. I think he's going to play rookie one. No, he uh, takes out the bad bishop. All right, well now, that does actually resolve the issue of this bishop staring down this knight. And um, we're threatening this bishop, which is undefended, so we're going to have pawn takes, yeah? Okay. And now we have pawn takes, and now... The remaining bishop, which is actually white's good bishop, must be said, is staring down at our knight, which is defended by the queen and by the g-pawn, but not really, you know. So. I would still play c6. I like c6. Uh, is there a future for this bishop down here? That bishop on a4 is not bad, because it would pin this pawn on the queen. And also, there's no b-pawn. There's no, no b-pawn that can disturb it from that square. But there is a knight. So I would say, nah. I would say, if this bishop's got a home, f5 is its home. But my preference would be pawn to c6. Pawn to b6. Uh -huh. What is the meaning of this? 
Well, one thing that we've done is we've blocked any reverse gear for our bish. Right. However, what Bob has realized is this bish is actually already on an outpost. There is no B pawn, there is no D pawn, there is no pawn that can come up and knock our bishop off his nice little square here. And if this king ever dreams about casting short, ooh, guess what we've got lined up against it? Mm-hmm. Now that wouldn't be an immediate threat because we've got, you know, a little bit of granite here. But granite can can be moved, right? We could like ding f5, f4, you know, eliminate pawn, and suddenly we find ourselves pinity pinned with that. Okay, well let's see what Whitey does. I don't know. Uh, no, no, I don't know. I just don't buy it. I don't buy that move. All right. So another thing that we've done is, of course, we've freed up this bishop to some extent. And I do notice now that this pawn is undefended. So Bob may be considering bishop a6 attacking this pawn. Then we have to say, well, how's white going to defend that pawn? Because he can't put his queen here and he can't put his queen here. So the only way he's going to defend that pawn is there because he can't put his knight there because he's stuck his bishop on it. So here, we can be pretty confident we're going to get knight to d2. But he can't play knight to d2, because guess what else his knight's doing? Defending this guy here. Yeah, the mad priest. He's just stuck himself on a3. So for that reason, I won't be investing and I'm out. Right? Here, here. He's got no way to defend the pawn. Free pawn, bishop a6. Bang! Also, dude, notice the clocks here. Bob has used six minutes of his very generous 30 minutes. Chumpy over here has used one minute nine seconds. One minute nine to get yourself into a, a worse position. Now the problem is he's got, a, he's got an issue. How does he defend the pawn? Well, I don't know, because this knight can't do nothing. It's too far away. This is the only piece that can actually get there, because, like we said, queen can't come here to defend. Oh, hang on, hang on. There's another square. He's got to find that move. He's got to. He's got to play queen d2, e2. Okay, he doesn't do this. Instead, he trades off his bishop. Now then, hmm. Yeah, I didn't see that move at, at first. But again, if he puts his queen there, where's this knight going to? How's this knight going to get into the board? He's pushed h3, right? He can't go there because he's already walked into the path of an advancing pawn, right? And if he sticks his queen on there, that knight's stuck there. And if the donkey's stuck there, the king is stuck there because he's not casting this way. Hell no. Anyway, so we're going to recapture the bishop. Now what? to be used to recapture the bishop with, I think, b-pawn. And the reason is, again, this is an advanced pawn. There's no reason to clear the way for it at all. Take it with the b-pawn. Bingo. Okay, and now white finds, after several seconds more thought, now white finds queen e2. But he's got a big donkey problem. Yes. Okay, I'm thinking something like this. And the reason is, I want to attack this weak uh, rook in the corner. Nothing that this knight does can defend that rook. Uh, yeah, c3 could. c3 could. But I think it's time to unleash the queen. Question is, are we going to go here with ideas of going here? Or do we go here with ideas of going here? Time to try and predict what is Bob going to do. What are you going to do, Bob? I think Bob wants to come here. Not there. And I'll tell you why. Right? He comes here. He comes here. He's got two attackers on there, isn't he? Now, that's not to say White can't defend, though. White could play this knight move or this knight move and defend the pawn. So maybe Bob's going to go here. <gasps> Bob! You cunning little devil, you! Didn't even see that! Bob! Bob! Bob!
Bob is a man. Right, why is that so cool? He's taken out <laughs> the only piece in White's camp that's caused us any annoyance at all. This pawn, right, is defended only by this pawn. But the issue about this pawn is it's pinned and therefore it ain't defended at all. It ain't. It's not defend that's that pawn is not in the game. That pawn doesn't exist. Because if the, if it recaptures, bang, thank you for the queen. Bob, what a move, son. What a move. Okay, White pushes G3. Oh. He said it was his best ever game. I should have been ready for some cunning of some kind. Right, now, we don't have to move the knight, because the pawn's still pinned. And opponent has done what beginners do, and just pushed a pawn. Four reasons best known. Uh, I, I, I think I like that. I like that. Now, because the knight was there, but now the knight ain't there. So I think this, I likes this. And because we're looking at the rook, and we're look, also looking down at f2. Yeah. Bobba. And we 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 carry on pushing pawns because developing pieces into the board is for sissies. Maybe he's got ideas of putting his knight here. But even that's generous because take well no. We take it out anyway. We're, we're, we're a pawn up. We're only a pawn up, but here's the difference. Look at this cozy little corner of comfort. <sighs> oh! <laughs> you lost your rook. I didn't even notice, but I noticed the threat. But this is the queen comes back to d defend the knight, and I think sure is. Oh, it has to. Has to be. Has to be. Has to be. Knight c3, attacking the knight, attacking the queen. Oh, but then knight takes knight, but then queen takes knight with check. We're plus six now, we're a pawn and a rook up. Or even just take out the pawn. Take out the pawn. Now, I think take out the pawn first, because why? We've still got this move. We've still got it, still there. Nobody's taken that away from you, right? Um, but he's, he's moved the knight out of trouble, and do you know what? To be fair to Bob, he's still got bishop takes pawn. You know? He's fair, he's fair. <laughs> Tell me how long you thought about that move. Ten seconds. You've got 27 minutes. And 20 seconds. You could have at least have spent 20 seconds to find a better move than blundering your knight, right? Knight takes knight, or queen takes knight, or even this, because to be fair, the knight's not now just pinned. Because the knight can't take knight, because queen takes queen wins. Knight can't go anywhere because queen takes queen wins. So Bob now has three perfectly decent options. Which one does he go for? The fourth one. Rook A to B8. Completely unnecessary though, Bob, because it's you've already got two attackers and one defender. So adding the, the rook is adding insult to injury, isn't it really? Okay. Oh, look! Oh, oh, he's developed his horse. Oh, bless him. He's developed his horse. So now, now we have this, if king takes, we have finally, uh, bishop takes pawn with check as well. That's not bad. But the problem is that if this king vacates the back rank, the window has slightly closed on ideas of capturing this, hasn't it? Uh, well, it has if this knight's not there. Because then you can't really take this with a rook, because it's like queen takes, and you've just given up the exchange. That's my thinking, anyway. Okay, so all right, so we get in there first. Correct. Yes, mate. Yes. Yes. Correct. Because now knight can't take knight, because rook takes queen, and the queen's pinned and can't move. Brilliant move. Brilliant move. I'm learning from Bob in this. Take the queen. Yep. Rook takes rook. I mean, he's just... Yeah, well, rook takes rook for free, actually. Okay, so now what we have is... We have knight back here with check, eh? 
We've sacked a big exchange. Well, we haven't. We haven't because queen takes rook, king takes queen, knight takes knight, and Bob has secured himself what I like to call a winning endgame. Interesting. I'd like to see if that's the best move. Oh, king doesn't take. King doesn't take. Good move from white. Didn't even see that one coming, but we are up a bishop. Now, however, in issue is we've got a knight under attack. Knight has to retreat. Okay. Pawn to f4. We're plus nine. It's cap trompers on. Nope. Bishop here targeting this. Okay. Well, it's kind of improved the bishop. The bishop now has, you know, eyesight in a few directions rather than just like one before. Uh, but still, I mean, it's not like it can see more squares than it could before. I don't know, I'd have took the pawn out. If, if White's going to have any hope here, it's going to involve some kind of promotion. So you just want to eliminate all the pawns. And then you can walk it in. Okay. Knight retreats. Bishop's under attack, but defended d5. What do you reckon? D5? D5. Good man. And he's just pushing pawns. Oh. But, hang on, I don't understand. If pawn takes here and pawn takes, king takes, we're just giving up, up a pawn. Haven't we? There. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Bob's not even like... I'm not even bothered. Look, Bob on 16 minutes. That's what we call using time. I like it. He's like, pawns schmorns. I'm going to do this. And the only way you can stop me is night is to give up your knight. Nice one, Bobby. Also, this might come in at some point in time, but it can't right now because we're defending the bishop. Okay, he takes... <laughs> Bob's like, knights schmites. What are you going to do? Well, what you should do is knight takes, bishop takes knight, and then takes knight, and then, oof. But Bob's just sitting there going, I've got this rook, you know. I can just whip out this rook at any point and just, you know. Yeah, well, there you go. And it's a walk in now. It's a, this is what we call a walk in. You could just take the pawn, mate. You can just, just take it, swap it off, don't matter. You've got a rook and a bishop. Okay, now, our pawns are on dark squares, so king coming here, the only way to defend is going to be that. And then you can have king maybe coming round here, attacking both rook and pawn. It is on the slow side. Check, giving up the pawn. And giving up this pawn. But the rook doesn't care because the rook is so quick, it can gobble up at least one of these. Oh, 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 just skewer the king. Casual skewer, madam. Don't mind if I do. All right. And, oh, we've got rook here as well, if you want. King moves, but the king's going to come here or here and defend the pawns. That doesn't really work. I, right now, would just calmly be sticking my king on the C file just to get in the way of this pawn. No, Bob's feeling evil than that. He's going to go off pawn hunting. I'm going to hunt me some pawns. And basically now, this bishop's only job is to take out that pawn. Even if it gives up his life, then this rook can calmly go gobble, gobble, and we dance it in. Okay. What's he doing? Yeah, bishop gives up his life. Exactly. And now the king can't do nothing because the rook's going to come here. And Bob's king can literally do an entire tour of the board and come and eat that pawn. Okay, well that works also. And there goes Harry the H-pawn, and we have resigns. Okay, now let's look. Great game, by the way. Let me stick my light on. That fiery thing in the sky seems to have disappeared. Right, let's look at the game review. 96.1 accuracy and a brilliant. Good lad. No, you are having a joke. No inaccuracies in the entire game. Oh, what the chocolate-covered Christ is going on here. Okay, I'm going to flip the board. Wow. I don't even think we need to go through this, do we? He's not even played a single inaccuracy. 
every move is either book, good, excellent, best move, of which there were 25, it has to be said. Crikey. Crikey O'Reilly. I'm not, I'm not even going to... I'm just going to say, bloody good game, son. Bloody good game. And if you want to play this well, you need to join Chess Bootcamp Live, obviously, because something's going on. Bob. Not worthy, mate. Not worthy. Great game. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for watching. If you want to come and train with us... So tonight, what time is it now? Half past four UK time. In an hour and a half, um, it's going to be my session. We're doing a two-hour session. We're doing a whole load of mixed kind of puzzles and challenges and stuff like that. Then we're going to look at about 16 endgame positions. And we're going to try and work them through together. Um, if you love studying chess on your own, fantastic. You know, books, YouTube videos, studies, they're all there. There's so many resources out there. But what we like to do is we like to get together with mates and study together because it's just more fun. Um, but yeah, I'll try and get this video live. But yeah, come along to Chess Bootcamp Live. Chessbootcamp.club is the URL. Come along, give it a month. It's $49 for, for an entire month. And you get like five, six hours of training every week. The times, can, the times and days can vary slightly, but everything's recorded. It all goes on the website, so you've already got like 120, 130 hours of lessons that you can catch up on to your heart's content, get to know people. Um, yeah, it's just it's brilliant fun. I wouldn't change it. So if you fancy that, you're very, very welcome to join us. Other than that, thank you for watching the video. I'll see you all soon.